Um, I will be starting an actuarial consultancy role after university um, and it's very technical from the onset. Um, there's not so much a um, chance to do spring weeks, it's mainly about work experience in this industry and showing willingness because it's very technical and to be able to do any sort of role in the office you would have to understand a lot of the theory behind it and they don't have time to teach you it. So I, started, I did my first work experience at age 14 and went back every year until age 19 to be able to secure enough information to be able to then convince them to take me on for an internship. Um, that's the main route into this job. You have to do an internship mainly in your penultimate summer at university, which will then either convert into a graduate scheme or you can apply for a graduate scheme without having done an internship. In terms of the recruitment process, you have to start very early on, um, mainly in August in your final year if you want them to go for the graduate scheme. It usually starts with online application form. They don't tend to ask for CVs or cover letters. It's more a few 500 or 1,000 word questions um, explaining why you want to be an actuary, why you want to work in that business, why you want to work at that firm, um, current affairs, and usually about 1,000 words on the actual actuarial profession. So it's very technical from the onset. From then, you'll be, if they're impressed by that, you'll be invited to do about four tests. So you'll do all of them ranging from the numerical to the logical reasoning, to the um, situational judgment test, although that isn't as common because you don't know what it's like to be in an actuarial office until you're actually there, so you can't really predict what you'd do in, in that situation. Then after that, you'll either get invited to a telephone interview or a face-to-face -face interview, but telephone interviews are more common. This is with someone from the HR department, although they will ask technical questions, but they will probably state that they don't understand it themselves, but they're just looking for you to tick off certain things. You really have to know what you're saying and say the specific words that you know they're after. After that, you'll either go to assessment centre or the final interview. Um, usually they put these on the same day, but that's not always the case. The assessment centre will definitely consist of group exercises where you have to maybe decide how to spend or allocate a few million pounds for a certain firm if their budget has changed or something like that. You'll also have a problem solving interview whereby they'll give you a few very bizarre, obscure questions and you have to show them your thought process to get to the answer. Certain questions I've been asked was how much did the Titanic weigh? How long would it take to walk to the moon? And how much milk is sold in the UK in a year? Um, obviously I got every single one wrong. Um, and nearly everybody does but they just want to hear your thought process because in actuary especially in a consultancy role your main, the main part of your job is a firm will come and say we're billions of pounds in deficit um, for our pension scheme how do we get out of this, you have to come up with a problem so they want to see that you can do that and think on your feet um, and then the final interview will be competency based but extremely technical um, you'll be You'll have to describe the entire profession. Um, you'll probably have to give examples of the maths you'll be using and the equations that you'll have to use, which you're going to have to go and research. And they're not just obviously on Google when you type them in. Um, but do make sure that you know it inside and out. It's also extremely important to know the economy and how the job links with the economy. And that's not just the UK economy, that's the world economy. Um, for example, if there's a budget announcement nearby or any sort of announcement to do, with pensions or insurance, then you have to know inside and out because they will ask you that. Um, so if you get a graduate job, what you'll be expected to do is for the first couple of years, you'll be pretty much doing the donkey work in the office while you're studying for your exams. You'll be doing mainly actuarial calculations, which are very long and very hard and very mathematical. And then they'll be checked by at least four or five people before being getting sent off to a client. You might be lucky enough to get onto a client team um, but that's not usually the case until you're qualified because they don't like to put qualified people out there. Um, if you're lucky, you can get through your 16 exams in three years, but that would be without many failures. Um, and you'll expect to do about three, two or three in each sitting, so you do two sittings a year. After that, a lot of firms will require you to become a fellow, um, which is what my firm does. So you have to do at least another two years of work with 
harder exams and harder projects. But then that's one of the most prestigious qualifications out there, so I'd really push you to aim for that if you can. And then you're at the highest point in your actuarial profession, and then the only route from there is to become partner of the firm, and then eventually the highest would probably be CEO of a consultancy firm. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Brilliant, thanks a lot. And I think the um, kind of brain teaser type questions that you touched upon come up quite a lot in consultancy and, and banking interviews as well. Luckily, not so much in law interviews, so I didn't personally, but they, I know they can come up. I mean, do you guys have any more examples of the kind of questions you're asked or how just really generally people can try and prepare for those? So I think in the context of investment banking, um, the questions really fall in two categories. The first type of which is actually to test how intelligent you are and how you go about going through the thought process. The second type really is just there to throw you off because you can't answer it. Now, the first type usually goes around a similar way in, in the way uh, the actuarial firms will ask you. I got questions about um, how many meals the athletes consume during the 2012 London Olympics. I also got asked you know, how many hairdressers there are in London. So obviously you're never going to get the right answer. The point is to... Uh, make a really good process and argue your way into a nicely informed answer and hopefully um, the interviewer agrees with you on that because even he wouldn't know the answer. They're just there to ask you and see your thought process. Now we got in the second type of question. There are usually some absurdly hard mathematical question that they would just throw out there to disturb you and to unsettle you and to see how you react under stress. Now questions like that usually either happens at the start. So for me one of the interview questions I got when I walked into the interview was to uh, answer what is the square root of 8 factorial, which is 1 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, and multiplied all the way to 8, and you square root the entire thing. And he expected an uh, actual answer to two decimal places, which is actually not possible, obviously. So that's the kind of question you might be faced with. Or some really long multiplication question they would just ask you in the middle of an interview where you're trying to answer, answer some questions about the economy, and they would just throw a question out there for you to kind of to see if you panic and see how you react. So just come prepared for that kind of stuff. Um, based on what uh, Deng said, I can only add that in case of consulting interviews, you won't come across very mathematically complicated questions. Uh, the primary thing they are looking for, uh, the consultants who are having interviews with you, is your business judgment. So you will often, pretty much in every single interview, you will get the market sizing question, uh, which is one of the type of brain teasers questions. So you will be asked questions such as try to estimate the, 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 market, the market for, um, for mobile phones in a given country, or try to estimate the number of people who play a given sport. So these are quite similar questions. And, and again, I will just emphasize that it does not matter what answer you provide. It's, the, it's your thought process that really, really matters. And interestingly enough, meanwhile in banking, these uh, market sizing, brain teaser questions do not last for so long. Uh, it happened to me to tackle a uh, market sizing questions for about half an hour. So it might seem that the question try to estimate the size, the market size of a given market isn't that of a complicated question that it wouldn't take that much time but uh, consultants are very often trying to fully understand every single assumption you make. So every single assumption you make will be questioned by the consultants. Uh, so then again, it's not about giving a right or wrong number. It's about making sure that the numbers you give can be justified uh, in a way. So then again, it's all about the thought process and how you, how you work it out. Can I just say something about preparation? Yeah. Obviously, because the questions are all very, very different, you can't really prepare for them that well. I found it useful to speak to people who've gone through the process and just see, like, ask for examples of how they tackled certain questions. And um, you can sort of copy the format in some ways. It's also useful to know very basic facts. If you're getting interviewed in London, know the population of London, know the population of the UK, know the population of the world. Know certain things like that, and it definitely will help because you can work it into a lot of different questions, just knowing facts like that, and like life expectancy and things like that, because yeah, you do have to justify every single point you say with at least some fact and awareness. Mm -hmm.